Hello and welcome. This is Martin from Cyber51. Um, today's video I'm going to show you a couple of uh, web application vulnerabilities. So there are more and more web applications out there. Uh, I'm doing this here on a, on a testing server called DVWA, so that's the damn vulnerable web application uh, which has vulnerabilities built in. But as part of our penetration testing, um, we always find exactly those vulnerabilities on live machines. And so I just want to, to highlight the, 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 the dangers really around it. So see like, for example, a website may offer like a ping for free. So if I type in an IP address 141.1.1.1, then I hit submit and then it should be pinging that and it, it does ping that, see? So uh, packet loss, but regardless, so the ping function worked. Now, if the web application is vulnerable, I could, for example, have an end ls, okay? So I put an end ls in and oh, all of a sudden I get some file structure of the, of the server and that's certainly something I should not be able to see. Or I can also try like a one cat and then um, etc pass wd, see whether that works. And oh yeah, see, I can see the pass WD file and that's probably not something you want your visitors to see because that's for the admin only and that should be well protected, okay? Um, another um, vulnerability is like the so-called file inclusion vulnerability. So if you have a look up here at your URL, um, what we can try here is simply to issue a command in here. So we manually modify the URL and let's try that again with the pass WD and see what the server responds. And if the server is vulnerable, as in this case, um, it's basically giving you the output here over the web interface. And that's also something which you probably um, do not want uh, visitors to, to do on, on your machine. Okay, uh, another one is like the, the classic so-called SQL injection where the um, input is not validated by the server if it's vulnerable. So a, a classic command here would be the, the SQL injection um, command or one equals one. Uh, so blank or one equals one. And then let's see what we get. And oh, I get the users of the SQL database, which is probably not something I should see. So I see a Gordon Brown here, a Hack Me, a Pablo Picasso, Bob Smith. So again, this is vulnerable and, and a lot of damage could be done if not um, looked at from the server administrator. Uh, another thing I want to show you is, is something called cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting is a methodology that you um, execute your own code like a JavaScript on someone else's web server. So see, this is a guestbook functionality. So I put in Martin and then I put in test and sign the guestbook. So I'm a good user here. And then what we see, oh uh, yeah, here's Martin and test. So the message was left. So everything cool, everything fine. But now Mr. Evil Guy comes around and Mr. Evil Guy now puts a script in. So I'm putting in a script and I'm saying alert and so let's give it a message. Let's call it XSS like for cross-site scripting and close the script here with the tag and see whether the guestbook is vulnerable. And oh yes, it is. See, like I was able to produce a pop-up and that's something I should not be able to do. And this is the stored X, um, cross site scripting. So if I go anywhere else and if I, if I come back here again, see, then this, this vulnerability is still there. So um, the pop up keeps reappearing. Uh, so that's something called a stored cross site scripting vulnerability. Um, another classic one here would be like evil one um, is the so called embedding of an iframe. So an, an iframe from the source here, like let's say we want uh, to embed something from HTTP slash slash uh, www dot google, google dot com. Okay, so we want to embed uh, an, an, an iframe basically from google.com. And let's close that here and let's say height 
uh, equals mm, 10. And width, sorry, width equals mm, also 10. Okay, so we'll, then let's close this and let's see whether that works. And let's scroll down here and see, we have a little pop-up box. I mean, we could have we could have said 50 or 60 or 70. Um, and then we, we basically can can embed uh, other content on that website. Now, you, you can imagine what, what sort of evil things you can do with that. If you think about online banking, so people go to, let's say, HSBC or Barclays or Bank of America. And if the web server is subject to cross-site scripting, they could capture like the logins and fish the logins uh, even though people are going to the real HSBC website or something, right? So um, pretty, pretty evil. Um, also, uh, uh, another vulnerability I would like to show you is, is again with the JavaScript, so call that evil2. Okay, so yeah, another JavaScript uh, vulnerability would be if I say script and then language, uh, language, language, yeah. Uh, it's fine. Equals and then Java script. And then we simply say here alert. Okay, and then document dot cookie. So what we are attempting here to do is actually to read out cookie information. So this could be used like for, for session high checking and things like that and pretty evil. So let's do this. And see, here you go. So we now get um, the cookie. So we are, we are able to to get the cookie out um, of the session, and this is also something which we usually should try to avoid. Um, okay. So those are just a couple of them, a couple of the vulnerabilities. And web applications these days um, make up more than seventy percent of all technical based attacks because they're so widespread and everyone has a website and there are loads of portals behind it. And, um, you know, we, we see cloud everywhere. We see web applications, we see portals, and it's so easy to set up websites these days. And um, the more technology you deploy, the more chance for vulnerabilities um, you have really. So this is, this is just um, an, an example here or a couple of examples about web side vulnerabilities and I hope you find this video useful and we look forward to see you in another video. Thank you very much.